they savor the challenge and promise of the future. Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kiki. You can find me at Magic of Paint on Instagram. And today we are going to be doing the at-home version of the apple pie churro that they served seasonally last fall. So if you would like to learn how I made these today, go ahead and stick around. So we're gonna start with the apple pie filling. Um, for this recipe, you're going to need four to six apples, depending on the size of your apples. Uh, the recipe that I was working with suggested that we use gala apples, but I had some Granny Smith and Ambrosia apples in my pantry, so I'm gonna add those in. Um, some lemon juice. If you have fresh lemons, by all means, you can use that. Um, sugar, cornstarch, cinnamon, salt, and water. Um, so I'm going to peel and dice my apples and we'll get started. Okay, so now we have our roughly diced apples. If you were using this recipe for an actual pie, you'd probably wanna make the slices a little bit bigger just so that they don't overcook when it's baking. But for the apple pie churros, I wanted nice small pieces as if you were actually getting it from the park. So to that, we are going to add our lemon juice. We're adding one teaspoon of lemon juice and two cups of water. And then we're going to add one cup of white sugar to that. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of cornstarch. teaspoon of cinnamon and then just a little dash of salt. So we're going to give this a stir and then we're going to put this in a pot on the stove on a high heat and bring it to a boil and then we'll lower the temperature to a medium heat and let it simmer for eight minutes. So I'm just going to give this a good stir and then transfer it over to the stove and we'll pick it up from there. So we've got it on the stove. It's a little bit easier to stir in this because there's more room in the pot than there was in that little bowl that I used. Um, so all the ingredients are nicely combined. So we're just gonna let this come to a boil and then I will lower the temperature to a medium temperature and let it simmer for six to 10 minutes. The time varies just depending on the size of the apple because we're going quite small. Um, it'll probably be closer to six minutes, but if you were making this for an actual apple pie, then you'd probably wanna let it simmer with the bigger pieces. So I let the apple simmer for the full 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna give them a little stir and give them a little taste to see if they are soft enough. They are definitely soft enough, still a little bit tender on the inside, but we don't want them to be really mushy for this recipe anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and we're gonna let these cool while we make our churro dough. Um, so this apple pie filling can be um, stored in the fridge for two or three days. You can can it if you know how to can. I don't know how to can, so I have no information on that. Um, or you can freeze it for up to six months. So let's let this cool while we work on our churro dough. So now we're gonna work on our churro dough. And for the churro recipe, you will need one cup of water, eight tablespoons of butter, a quarter teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one and a quarter cup flour, three eggs, enough oil to deep fry them, and a quarter cup of white sugar and cinnamon. 
You will also need either a Ziploc bag or a piping bag when it comes time to fry and a star tip. This particular one is the Wilton 2C, but I know the last time I went to make churros, um, this was actually a closed star tip and I had to stick a skewer through it to open it up. Um, but any star tip will do. So to start, we're going to turn our element on to a medium high heat. And we are going to add our one cup of water. We are going to add our salt. I always add less salt than a recipe calls for, so I didn't measure that out. Our eight tablespoons of butter. And for the dough, you're going to add half a teaspoon of cinnamon and then you'll hold on to the other quarter teaspoon of cinnamon for the sugar when you add it on top. So we're gonna let this come to a boil and combine. So now that we've got a nice little boil starting here, I'm going to turn the heat down to low and I'm going to add in the one and one quarter cups of flour. Just a little shout out to this bowl that I've had in my life for a solid 25 years or so. And you're gonna give that a good stir until it is all combined. So now that this is all combined, I'm going to turn the heat off, completely remove it from the heat, let it cool for about seven minutes, and then we'll add our eggs. So we've let the dough cool for the full seven minutes, so it's soft enough to touch, but still warm. Um, you wanna make sure that you've let it cool so that it doesn't cook your eggs as soon as you um, crack one in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my eggs one at a time. Um, between eggs, you'll stir until it's fully combined and then add your next egg. Um, I also have a little cup of water here just in case at the end um, it's still not the right consistency whether you've under poured your water or over poured your flour. Um, I like to just have this here just in case but I might not need it. All right, let's add the eggs. So now we've got all three of our eggs combined and I didn't add any extra water and the dough looks great as it is. So now I've got my piping bag prepared with the star tip. So we're just going to add the dough to the piping bag and set aside until we're ready to fry. So you can just fold down the bag over your hand and scoop the dough in, or you can rest it over a cup. Um, for a dough that's a little bit stickier, um, I find that's easy to hold in my hand, so I can squeeze it into the bag. All right, and then we'll just put this aside until our oil's heated up. So this next step is completely optional, but I am going to show you how I did it because I want my churros to be as authentic as they can be to the Disney parks. So you just need uh, some clean white sugar, green food coloring, and a Ziploc bag. So you would simply combine the sugar in the Ziploc bag and then put a few drops of green food coloring in. I already have some made here, so you can see that it's nice and green. And then you would just use this with the cinnamon to um, coat the churro once they're all cooked. So now it's finally time to make the churros. So I've got my oil heating up outside of the view of the camera. I've got a plate with a paper towel on it um, for when the churros come out of the oil. 
We've got our apple pie filling here, our churro dough here, our colored sugar here. You can use just plain white sugar, our cinnamon and caramel sauce. So let's just get our oil all heated up and we'll start frying. So we've got our oil heated up here. I've got my sugar and cinnamon mixed together here. I've got my plate with paper towel. I've got my churro dough ready. And the last thing you'll need here is a pair of clean kitchen scissors. Once your oil is heated up, um, the recipe online that Disney released suggested 350. I found that a little bit too hot. Um, I find that as long as it bubbles as soon as the dough goes in, you should be fine. I'm just gonna squeeze out some dough. Okay. And let it fry until it gets golden brown. So now that the churro's nice and golden, we'll take it out of the oil and onto the paper towel. and then we'll just fry up a few more pieces until we get the perfect ones. So now that we've got a few nice pieces all fried up, as I've been going along, I've just been dipping it in the sugar while it's still super warm out of the oil. Get a nice coating on there. And now we'll move on to plating. So now that we've got a few pieces out of the fryer and into the sugar, I'm just gonna plate them. So at Disneyland, it would be one whole churro cut in half, plated together, served together. I guess I'm not really plating things. I wish mine were a little bit straighter, so it looked just like from the park, but I'm sure it'll taste delicious. So I'm just gonna spoon over the apple pie filling. version of the apple pie churro. And here you may savor the challenge and promise of the future.